We welcome you to today's lesson on showing you how to save in folders using Purple Mesh. We're going to be looking at saving files in folders and also the subfolders. I must emphasize how important it is to name your files appropriately. Otherwise, you're just going to get bogged down with lots of problems, like trying to find a file. Naming a file properly can alleviate a lot of headaches. And believe me, in computers, you can get a whole lot of headaches. The administration and management of all your files is very, very important. This little orange work button is extremely important. That's where you're going to be placing all your files. That's where you can access all your files. So let's have a look. All right, so we've got all this. You can see if I, if I open my work, okay, let's have a look. We can open that. My work is where you're going to be keeping your files in. If I click on class, it's showing me all the classes. I don't think it'll be like that on your computer. If I click on one of the little arrows on the left hand side, like that, I'm going to open it and you can see it's opening up the grade 5D folder and you can see it's got a whole range of different activities in it. And if I go to the to go activity folders, which we, is where we're going to place today's work in, there would be no work because we haven't done anything. There's the art competition, which comes up next term. I know you all enjoyed that thoroughly. All right, so that's where we're going to save our files. We were looking the to go folder. You can see now, I'm just showing you there's nothing in there. It's completely empty and we're going to fill it up with what the work we're going to do today. We're going to append a whole lot of numbers to our file names in this folder to just indicate appropriate names. It's easy for us to find. Um, it's critically important that we have that that we find our files very, very easily. Otherwise, you're just going to say, oh, now I've lost my work again. And you might not know that you've just named it inappropriately. So let's go to home and we're going to show you what we're going to do. So we're going to open up the tool section and we're going to look for our to go. We just go to launch app, click on that purple button and it's going to open. And you'll see that we've got these little arrows on the right that can help us to navigate through the challenges. So we can choose an appropriate one. I don't really mind where you start. You can start at a place that is where you'd like to start. So I'll start with this car one. I'm just going to move our car to starting position. And you can see that I'm putting them on the intersection between that line and that line. It's got to be moving on the lines because we are going to be, we know that that's how the cars would move. All right. If I moved it there, obviously it'll be going in between. It wouldn't be, it wouldn't be moving appropriately. Now we know that if we wanted to get to the code section, we would click on that little gear gear button, and we would allow programming to access these over here. These are the more sophisticated coding aspects. You don't really need to use those today. And you've got these buttons. And remember, we did have numbers on the right hand side that we could have dragged into the loop over here because we've got a loop over here we would have dragged those buttons and the arrows to show how many steps in a specific direction and this one's just showing going all the way down the code runs all the way down we're dragging just to show you how it works and when it gets to the bottom bottom there it'll go back up to the top but over here we don't have those numbers so i'm just wondering why we don't have those numbers uh, let's have a look if we go out and we restart whether it's just a problem of restarting the app so let's launch app again and see what happens I'm going to just find that one again so we can test and see if it's a if it's going to activate those numbers all right so we're going to go to the gearing section general allow programming and okay so we got the okay button and we see and the, the numbers are still not there all right so the, but it's not really important because for today's lesson uh, we're just going to place the, the the files in specific folders and I'm not really wanting to test you on the specifics of coding right so you do you go to the finishing point we just will go with our car and we know that our car's got to get to that point so the red lines are going to just follow all the way around to that point and then we we come to the situation of okay now what do we do but save our file so we're going to click on that button that I'm showing you now critically important save file and we open the my work folder by my by default and we scroll to our class 
and we know that we are talking about 5D. So we click on 5D, we go to the To Go Activity folder, and we're going to write in our file name. Now, I would suggest that it's not a good idea to write car because there's the great possibility that many people in our class are also going to write car, and one person is just going to save their work over the other, and a whole lot of people are going to lose their work. So saving the work under car is as a file name is definitely not a good idea. So I would suggest, and I'm just going to use this as an example, you might decide that you want to do something a little bit different, but I'm going to go with my name because I do know that my name is unique. There's no one else in this class that has that name. And I'm going to go with zero. I'm going to put a zero after my name. I'm going to add it at the end, zero, zero, one, to show it's the first file saved. So we're talking about the first file here. 0, 0, 1 is showing the first file. Then we'll save, and the next file we're going to go 0, 0, 2. So this 2 is indicating, and then we'll go 0, 0, 3, and we're going to continue consecutively naming our files with that number at the end. This is really good practice because you find that very often when you open up in Explorer or any of the files, you'll see that they're arranged alphabetically and you'll easily be able to see that everything's there. So try and get the first part of your file name to be something that is distinct, it's unique, and then the numbers that run after it to show the consecutive files that follow. Some programmers might even say that, look, the name Erin Bradley would not really be suitable, that your file name should be something that explains what you are doing. So you would say, for example, the to go act Erin Bradley to go activity 001, 002, and 003, and go on like that. And that might be a lot more appropriate because when you see just your name and 001, it does not really tell you which file you're dealing with. So try and make your file names that they are telling you a lot more than just being a name. They must be able to tell you in the name by the, the, the naming policy that you're using what they actually do and a little bit more than just um, anything like I've done here. All right, but because we are putting it in the to-go activity, I think it might be appropriate that we just give it our, our name and our surname and a, a number at the end. The whole idea is that all the files that should be grouped together have a name that automatically will group them together when you see them listed. It's very important to work systematically so that everything is logical and structured and it makes your life a lot easier when you do work with files. So remember, we're going to go on that save file, that button that I'm showing you now, save file. When you go on the export file, that would be taking a file a picture from Purple Mash and putting it onto your download folder, it would be external to Purple Mash. So you're moving files out of Purple Mash into whatever you want to use. You could put it into a PowerPoint display, a Word document. It might be something that you're doing for one of your teachers and you want to use Purple Mash. By default, Purple Mash is going to, when you click on the export folder, it's going to give it that name. You will then change it give it a more appropriate name. I'm just going to type in my name once again. And when I click on OK, and I'll show you how this goes, I'm going to give it, I would have typed 001, but it doesn't give me enough space. I'm just going to take out the Bradley at 001. OK. And you can see at the bottom of my screen, it's saying that the file is downloaded onto my computer. If I click on it here, you can see it's opening. And that is saved in the download folder. It's a PNG file. You'll see at the end of the file, it says PNG called extension, which is telling you that it's a image file. It's like a photograph, it's an image, and you can use this and can bring it in to your projects as I indicated earlier. So that's on the export file. Now the save file is what I'm showing you there. That's where you're gonna save your work in this particular activity. So the open file folder, that's where you would be able to see all the files and check to see whether your work is in there. So if I go to to go activity, look, there's nothing here. This white space is indicating that there's no work yet in this folder. So there's, it's completely empty, it's an empty folder. Um, obviously, when you guys put your work in there, you're going to see it's going to fill up and you're going to have those names with those numbers at the end. You're going to append a number at the end and it should be arranged alphabetically. And that would be indicated in that white space. In most instances, you're going to see an alphabetical arrangement of the files in a particular folder. 
which is going to assist you to find the folder or even the files that you're looking for. So it's really important that you name your files as I've just indicated and that will give you an insight into finding the files that are found in the appropriate folder. Like you can see here, the to go activity is where we place our work, the work for our specific class. Now let's get to the activity. All right, so once we have finished the activity, you've seen I've drawn a, right, a red line just to indicate the route of the car. And we have now completed use the whole activity and we're going to now put that into a file or we could go to a new challenge. So you go to this button and you can scroll back and forth with these little white buttons, do the activity and save it with save file as I'm showing you now, save file. And remember the new challenge, that little white piece of paper button, scroll around, find the activity you want to do. Remember we're doing eight of them. You do them and save file. Very important that we save them in that folder that I have shown you already. You might need to move your little sprite into an appropriate spot to start. But I think most of us have got the idea of what's involved here. It's not too difficult to do. And you don't really need to go and do anything spectacular with the coding. All you're doing is basically moving with those buttons and then going to save in the appropriate folder, giving it an appropriate file, na file name, and then going to the next challenge so that you've done all eight of them. There are eight challenges and there's one activity where you would have to make your own. I don't think that anyone's going to have much difficulty doing this. It's pretty easy. You don't really have to do anything that's extraordinary with your coding here. All you need to do is just complete the activity and administration of those folders by placing the file in the appropriate folder and naming it appropriately. That's basically what's expected at this particular point in time. Putting the right file name with the right numbering system at the end of it would indicate to me that you know how to name your files properly. A big thank you to all of you for participating in this lesson. We want to urge you to please continue supporting us and subscribing to our YouTube channel.